Jim Brown, Cruffalo Obama, Billy Graham, the late Steve Jobs, Bishop Noel Jones, Dr. Jack Graham, and even the former and late President Ronald Reagan. And the list goes on and on of effective communicators and preachers. And then Paul the calls and submit to your spirits that although I enjoy studying and listening to all of these people and many more, I discovered that the most effective communicator and preacher to ever walk the face of this earth is Jesus Christ. There is not a soul alive or has leader that can preach logos. What is logos? The word or the rhema. What is rhema? The revelation of the word and effectively communicate God's truth like Jesus Christ. See, Jesus not only preaches to the mind, he also speaks to your spirit. Jesus not only preaches to your soul, he also speaks to your heart. Jesus not only preaches the way you feel, but he also speaks the way you go. He preaches and speaks both to your present and your future. Jesus literally preaches and speaks to the totality of who you are. And that's why when we go to church on Sundays, that's why we are always bringing not only our thinking caps, but our listening ears, because we need God to speak to our hearts. I don't know how you feel about it. That's my song. In fact, that's my devotion every day when I'm in the world. I'm asking God to speak to my heart. Give me a word for my life. Why? Right. Right. Because I'm not that small. I'm not that strong. I think that I can navigate through life on my own. I'm not that small. I'm not that strong. That I, that I cannot afford to think that I can solve every problem that I will encounter. That I can even balance every situation that I will experience. So I don't know how you feel about it, but I need God to speak to my life. Come on, look at your name. Look at me. It's a name, brother. I need God to speak to me. Now, there are many models that consist of what we call effective communications. One effective communication model comprises of what we call an introduction. Then you have the main points or the main stages. And then you have the transitions. And then you have the, the conclusion. And I discovered that when I look at this effective model, this communication model, it reminds me of the life that we live. Right. And again, our life consists of these four components. Number one, we are born. That's our introduction. And then we go through the main points or the main stages of life. And so we transition from being a baby to adolescent, from adolescent to preteen, to we transition again from preteen to teens, and then to uh, uh, young adulthood, and then to adulthood, and then to uh, middle age, to eldership, and to seniorhood. This is what life is about stages and transitioning from stage to stage, and then we come to the finality of life, and it's the conclusion, and we were saying it's not that, we just transition. This is the law. But here's the problem. The problem is, whenever we do not ask God to speak to our lives, whenever we do not ask God to speak to our hearts, whenever we're not having a conversation with God, that we pray and then listen. Let God talk to us and then we pray. Whenever we miss out on that opportunity, we don't let our transition away on from one stage to the next. Preach, I'll do the best I can. Some of us become stuck in the work life. Some of us miss out on getting to the next level, not because the Holy Spirit is not moving, it's because we don't know how to transition with it. I wish I had some up here. And that's why you got some old folks trying to act young, and you got some young folks trying to act single, all because they have not learned how to transition with it. Look at the table saying, hey, you know, we need to learn how to transition to it. First of all, it's interesting that the effective communication model of life speaks to what we have to go through. Let me go further and say that as well as the effective communication and preaching, and one of my mentors, Reverend Dr. Donald Parson, 
taught me this model. He said, Johnson, tell them what you're going to tell them. And then tell them, and then tell them what you just told them. If you're a Sunday school teacher, you're a preacher, if you're a communicator, you're a kid, 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 you this is what Jesus does. He does two things. Number one, he upsets their equilibrium. The second thing that he does is that he analyzes their discrepancies. And the third thing, he gives a clue to the resolution. All right, rewind and play. He upsets their equilibrium. That's the heart, that's the shock. Is that what Jesus said to me? I can't believe Jesus. Secondly, he analyzes their discrepancies. That's why is my situation like this? Why are things not going right for me? How come I'm always crying and complaining and it seems like nothing gets better? How come when I feel like I'm taking two steps forward, I'm taking five or six steps backwards? And the last bad discrepancy. And then there's no one to the resolution. How can I overcome my situation? How can I mature or pass my circumstances? How can I fix it? How does life for me become better? What would be an interesting model that Jesus gives us? Why not out of the text? Let me go back again. Now, one, he upsets their equilibrium. Look at your name real quick. Is it anybody? He upsets their equilibrium. Yes, now, when we talk about the word equilibrium, that means a state of emotional balance or balance. This is what he does. He unbalances their balance. And he gives chaos to their powers. All right, let's say it one more time. He upsets their equilibrium. What do we do, preacher? Well, he, he gives, he unbalances their powers, and he gives chaos to their powers. And let me tell you this. He does it by speaking this word. God bless you.
is right where they was. And Jesus in his divine and infinite wisdom upsets their emotional violence. He upsets their equilibrium. And he says in verse 17, do you not realize that you are wretched? I know you got to go through the $3 in your pocket. I know you think you got to go all along. I know you think that you're doing this and doing that. But at the end of the day, you are rich. What you're doing is pitiful. Now, I've got to do a little translation. It says like this. It's miserable work. It's you're poor. You're blind. And you're not rich, but you're mad. I wish I had some help here. You got some money, but you're still poor. I wish I had some help here. You think that you got to go along. And I know, I know, I know that the new school preachers have taught us prosperity, health, and wealth. And I know, I know that one of the pastors of the largest church just said, smile, and as long as you smile, and everything will be all right. Uh -huh. Well, it's interesting that what we hear is different than what we often read. Uh -huh. Don't you find it interesting that the picture that is painted about Jesus is not the picture that Jesus painted of himself? See, he is not a God. He's not only a God that will pick you up and turn you around. He's not only a God that will save your soul. He's not only a God that will heal you, that will deliver you, that will make a way from you. But he's also a God that will call you wretched when you have to become complacent. Oh, I wish I had some more people. Yeah, we don't like to hear that. Oh, he's also a God that will call you beautiful and poor, blind and naked. Why? Because he's a God of the truth. This is how he says it. In verse number 15, he says, I know your deeds. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The only one who you rich. <laughs> you know what you've been thinking. You know what you're working. He said, I'm going to get out of But I also know that you will be cold. You know how. Yeah. Right, right. Uh -huh. He says, you're looking at all. But the problem is this. I wish you was either one or the other. Instead of the one, I wish you were cold. I can deal with that. Or I wish you was hot. I wish you were either wrong or right. I can deal with that stuff that's in between. See, I can deal with you being right because I don't let none of you all when you're right. <laughs> and I can deal with you. I can handle you when you're wrong because you're standing on my room. Right, right, right. But no shades of gray. Uh, no more of in my cause shattering the feet. No more playing both sides against the middle. See, we make a mistake and we try to treat you Jesus like we treat each other. There you go. That's who we want. Your way, no service your way out of a situation. 
works of God. Not only is Paul still the same. He said, I am He said, He said, I am going to be whole or high. I don't need no new old people around me. I don't need no old people. Oh, my God. 
himself. You got to understand for yourself. Just a little talk with Jesus will make everything all right. If you do not get a song in your own heart, you can't wait for Justin to do up on Sunday and sing. You can't wait for Shereen to sing. You can't wait for the praise to sing. You got to get your own song in your own heart. Yeah. Oh. They was not a 
excited about Jesus. They were not on fire for the Lord. Yes, they were working, but their service was lukewarm. They were coming, but their coming was half-hearted. And so Jesus upsets them in the middle. He unbalances their balance. He gives chaos to their comments, and then he analyzes their discrepancy, their inconsistency. He tells them the truth. <coughs> he tells them, I'm going to put you out of the mouth because you're not hot or cold. You're not fire. You ain't doing nothing like you're supposed to be doing. Right. But then we get to come to the resolution. Uh -huh. Because an effective communicator, an effective preacher, right. not only tells you the truth, right. but they also tell you how you can become better. Many of us, because of the relationship, I found that out when I came to Rockford. Many of us, because of our close relationship, because we're very relational, we won't tell folks the truth. Right. right. To their face. Right. 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 And get mad when somebody else tells them the truth. Mm -hmm. Are you watching with me? Yeah. Right. And so we forfeit the opportunity to be a blessing to them because we won't tell them the truth. Yeah. And we make a mistake and try to give a resolution based on something that's not true. Right. And there are others of us that will tell the truth. But we tell the truth, they mean the code of honor. Right. I wish I had said that. Right. And we're telling the truth and we have no resolution. We don't even have a resolve. We don't want to be I don't know. You pay for it. You pay for it. How do I get that? I don't know. I don't know what you get that. I just want to make a simple difference. Now, that's not what Jesus does in the text. He says, I've come so that you can become better. He gives a proof of the resolution. Look at verse number 18. He says, I counsel you. I will give you some good advice. He says, I want you to die. We're about to receive your best from me, not from them, from me, gold refined in the fire. Mm -hmm. Let me say it one more time. I said, I counsel you to buy to invest from me gold refined. Here's, here's the key. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. Gold refined in the fire. All right, let me say it one more time. I don't need y'all to miss it. He says, I counsel you to buy, to invest. To invest your time, to invest your person, to invest your thoughts, your ideas, the totality of who you are. I counsel you to invest from the gold refined, and here's the key words, not gold. The key words are this, in the fire. In other words, he wants us to invest in the fire. Now, when I first read this text, I said, John, the Revelator, you got to be crazy. <laughs> because you're asking me to invest, to spend some time. Now, that's some quality time in the fire. Mm -hmm. Can we be honest? Yeah. Nobody wants to go through the fire. Right. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to Fire is not comfortable. The fire is unpleasant. Okay. The fire hurts. Mm -hmm. The fire stings. Mm -hmm. The fire burns. And when I read the text, that is the very reason why he wants us to go through the fire. Mm -hmm. He said, if you're going through the fire so that you can truly become rich. Okay. See, right now, y'all got some money. But you ain't got no love. Okay. Why don't you have some money? Right now, you're basing your prosperity right. on things that you can't see. But true prosperity is based on that that you cannot see. Right. And that's how I feel. Right. I don't need you to go to the fire because there are some dirt on you that I need to burn off of you. Right. So that you can put on some black hair and some red. So that you can put on your strength of manliness, your sin, things that you say you shouldn't say, places that you know that you shouldn't go, so that you, so that you can open up your eyes and you no longer be blind, so now that you can see, I need you to invest in the fire. Right. Jacob says like this, when we go through the fire, we shall come forth mm -hmm. like we go. Yeah. Why not? 
didn't call the rich. Why do you call the blind beautiful? Because you're a new woman. How can I get better? Invest in the life. What's the whole point of blessing Jesus? Right there in verse 19. Those whom I love, I rebuke and discipline. Right. Let me say one more time. The people that I love, I rebuke and discipline. That's a little bit what you do. I need you to be honest and rebuke. Stop complaining. Stop murmuring. Yeah. Stop holding the finger. Stop letting your problems and worry about it else. Let me rebuke you and discipline you because who I love, I will always test times. I will allow you to go to the fire because it's not really about the fire, but it's about who you go to the fire with. I wish I had some help with that. Well, who is it that I'm going to go to the fire with? He said, it depends on what you do. He says, you need to open the door and let me in. Yeah. He says, in verse 20, I am. I stand at the door and knock, and if anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I'll come in. I'm out here when I tell you, let Jesus in. Yeah. Did you hear what I just said? Yeah. Let Jesus in. Come on, look at your neighbor real quickly and say, neighbor, let Jesus in. Yeah, we allow a whole lot of other people to come in. And we shut Jesus out. But we got to learn how to flip that. We got to learn how to flip the script and reverse that. We got to learn how to shut some people out. And let Jesus in. We got to do this like this. Because Jesus knows all about our troubles. No, not what. We got to learn how to let Jesus in. Step to the Some folks would rather have houses than land. Some folks choose silver and gold. These things they treasure and forget about their souls. But I decided to make Jesus my choice. The world is rough. You have to go on this stuff. The heels are often so hard to climb. But I started out a long time ago. And there is no doubt in my mind. I have decided to make Jesus my choice. It's just not about feeling good, but it's really about being good. In the rest of the Bible, find not only the will, but create within yourself the desire to let the praise God and let the Lord shine and go deeper. To reach for it in the fire. Amen. See, it's the fire that might be made stronger. It's the fire that makes sure you. Amen. It is the fire that knows you that teaches you that it should be not about the fear of the country of our belief. It's not just about jumping up and down and shouting and dancing. It is really about receiving a word from the Lord. Amen. And sometimes that word is good to me. Amen. And then sometimes that word is just good for me. Because when he comes, mm -hmm. he reduces and he visits. Yeah. And this is what all says, we know we're not perfect. Right. Mm -hmm. And he said one more time, since we know we're not perfect. All right. All right. Since I know I'm not perfect. Right. Since I know I mess up. Right. Since I know I have praise sometimes. And right. I should be true and I have the word to the world in my mind. Right. Because he's trying to minimize me at the grace. Okay. And what we're here, he's trying to limit me more like the TV. Right. And so when he disciplines me, when he chastises me, he just put me back in line. Yeah. He just put me back in. Right. And that's what it truly means to be covered yeah. by the blood of Jesus. Yes. That will be you know, but it's something to that. Not just to be able to shout and cry and all that good stuff. That's the other side of that. I'm going to go to the 
Let us truly adopt the words of the Psalms that we declare as I will bless the Lord. 